All right, great. Well, hello, everybody. This is Michael Cishan. I'm Chief Marketing Officer at One Cosmos. Uh, here today with Rohan Pinto, our Chief Technology Officer, to talk about digital wallets. Um, welcome to the, the vlog, Rohan. How are you today? Doing good, Michael. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. It's always a pleasure. Um, so digital wallets, a little bit of mystery around what this, uh, what this construct is. Uh, what is a digital wallet? Well, I mean, there's absolutely no mystery about the fact that a wallet can be a digital wallet. I mean, especially in this day and age where we are all used to working online with laptops, with mobile phones, etc. Having your identity or any any form of document uh, available in a digital form that can be presented for verification, regardless of whether it is a software on a computer that stores your identity or your document in some form, like your Adobe PDF documents uh, or your airline tickets or even your credit cards for that matter, um, regardless of whether it's stored on a desktop, on a computer or in a mobile phone, phone is in some form a uh, form of digital wallet okay okay well when, when somebody says digital wallet i think the first construct that comes to my mind is what's most familiar which is the apple wallet so is right. a digital wallet and an apple wallet different or are they the same well uh, uh apple wallet is a form of digital wallet however it's a wallet that is shipped and controlled by apple so apple lets you hold certain forms of documents within their wallet Whereas there are other vendors like us and a lot of other vendors out there who also have digital wall wallets of their own form. Uh, every airline uh, literally has a digital wallet of their own because that's where you store your airline tickets that you use when you travel. Uh, so yes, uh, Apple's digital wallet or your Apple ID or your Apple wallet is no different from any other digital wallet that exists out there, except in the form of the capabilities that the digital wallet might provide to its users it. or consumers. Got it. Okay, great. So um, the one cosmos wallet um what's unique about the one cosmos digital wallet yeah so before jumping on to the one cosmos digital wallet let's talk about a normal digital wallet and since you bought up apple wallet as an example let's talk about apple wallet and what can be stored in an apple wallet and let's compare it to what the one cosmos digital wallet has and what it brings to the table excellent now in a normal apple wallet i'm sure a lot of you have already booked airline tickets and you download a qr code you add it to your apple wallet and when you travel you show your qr code to the travel agent and they verify that your ticket is still valid and you're allowed to board your flight now this particular qr code that exists in your Apple wallet, it, it's basically an identifier that says that the traveler is Michael C. Sean, he's flying from New York to uh, San Francisco on flight number A123 on a specific day at a specific time. However, in order to verify the authenticity of that particular ticket that you hold within your wallet, the airline would have to look up its backend system to ensure that the ticket is still valid and correlate that ticket that you have purchased to an actual individual who might be in possession of that ticket. And therefore, every time you board an aircraft, apart from just showing your, your uh, ticket, they also ask you for your ID and you typically show your driver's license or your passport, depending on whether you're traveling domestic or international. And that's what the Apple wallet doesn't have today, which is a form of identity that is bound to the identity document that you're presenting for verification. And that's the major difference between the Apple wallet and what One Cosmos does. Because the One Cosmos wallet, it's all about identity. It's about ensuring that the person in possession of a document or an identity document truly is the person that it has been issued to. So you have an identity that's bound to the digital document. And that's what makes a huge difference between presenting a document bound to an identity within the One Cosmos wallet versus just a document using any other wallet for that matter. Okay, well, that was my next question, and you kind of beat me to the punch there, which was wh wh what was the importance of identity proofing to a digital wallet? And I, I think you, you just answered that question. Um, now, identity is proofed at a, a, a variety of levels, right? We, we talk about flexible levels Absolutely. of identity assurance. So how is that notion of, of uh, flexible levels of identity assurance related to the digital wallet? What, why is that important? <laughs> Absolutely. So let's let's go with an example out here, uh, especially in this day and age where at least in Canada, I'm not very sure about the US, but every time you go to a restaurant, we are supposed to show our COVID vaccination certificate in order to book a table, uh, especially in, for events. You're supposed to show your vaccination certificate and most of these vaccination certificates are presented in a digital form today. Uh, 
So apart from showing your vaccination certificate, you also need to show some kind of an identity to ensure that the vaccination certificate that has been issued belongs to the person that is entering the premise or is entering the facility and hence your identity document is also used to ensure that the vaccination certificate correlates to the identity of the user. However, when you're trying to prove your identity at that point in time, all you're trying to prove is that you are Michael C. Sean or I am Rohan Pinto and this vaccination certificate has been issued to me. There is absolutely no need for that establishment to know how old I am, there's no need for them to know whether I'm still valid to drive or travel. There's no need for them to know my actual address where I live at. However, if I was accessing some other service online, for example, I'm trying to uh, download uh, medication based on an online prescription that I, I might have subscribed to, it is very important for the subscriber to ensure that the medicine that has been prescribed is also prescribed to somebody who's over 18 uh, or the prescription that needs to be shipped is shipped to the actual address that the individual lives at rather than any random address. So that's what makes various forms of assurance associated with an identity play a role in ensuring that it's not just about identity, it's also about the various levels of identity depending on the kind of service that you're trying to access or interface with that makes a whole lot of difference. Oh, that's very interesting. So, so the, um, the uh, um, what's, what was the word I'm looking for? The, um, the, uh, so, so the analogy of a wallet um, is somewhat of a, uh, just an inert, storage location there's a little bit more to it on the digital side at least with the the one cosmos wallet absolutely it's not just about data storage it's also about proving the authenticity of that individual uh, for example if i had a phone and i took a picture of my driver's license uh, and just walk over to an establishment and show them a picture of my id on the phone there is absolutely no assurance that that id is actually mine it has not been tampered with or it has not been stolen okay. whereas in the digital wallet world it's not about just storing the picture of a document it's also about ensuring that that document is valid and you have certain authenticity signatures tied to that digital document that gives the establishment the assurance that that document is actually valid and has been issued by a verified I source. See. Okay. All right. Now, a, a wallet um, of all sorts uh, can contain some very personal information. Uh, so Absolutely. security has got to be an important construct here for a digital wallet and the one Cosmos wallet. Um, Absolutely. Can you talk about our approach to uh, securing the digital wallet? Absolutely. So when we create a digital identity for a user within the wallet, it's not a blanket term saying uh, Rohan living at a certain address with a certain date of birth has a digital ID. We verify and vet every attribute that's associated with that person's identity within the wallet, which means that my date of birth is attested, my address is attested and verified. My name has also been attested and verified. So when I try to access a service, depending on the kind of service that I'm interacting with, I can choose to present certain facets of my identity data to the service that I'm interacting with. For example, if I go to a liquor store and I'm trying to buy a bottle of beer, all the person needs to know at that point in time when that transaction occurs is if I am of the legal age of buying alcohol they don't need to know what my address is and they don't need to know my exact date of birth they need to know whether i'm over 18 or under 18. okay so that's what makes a big difference between storing all identity uh, attributes and encapsulated together as one versus user having control over each identity attribute associated with this digital wallet and presenting it to a consumer or a service on an as needed basis. I see, I see. So, so do we um, as uh, consumers, as the end user, need to be worried about our digital wallets getting hacked? Uh, Yes, you do. I mean, it would be so nice and wonderful if I could say, no, you don't have to worry about it getting hacked at all. Uh, yes, you do have to be concerned about it being hacked. And therefore, it is really important for a consumer, per se, to understand the kind of wallet that he's using in order to store and present his identity data rather than download any wallet off the App Store and use that uh, 
as an identifier of sorts. Okay, and, and are there um, are there there specific um, safeguards that we've in, in, implemented at One Cosmos to prevent the wallet from being being hacked? Oh, absolutely. Apart from us following certain protocols and standards and ensuring that the wallet cannot be hacked, we have also gone through a series of certifications that gives consumers the assurance that the wallet is actually certified by FIDO. It is certified by NIST. Uh, it has been attested and verified to be a wallet that that complies with the NIST identity assurance levels. It is a wallet that complies with the FIDO specifications of how signatures are validated and vetted. So while it might not be possible for every consumer to understand the technical aspects of how a wallet is built or how a wallet would work, at least knowing that the wallet that they use has been certified by known entities like FIDO or Cantara or the ISO 2007 specs, uh, it gives uh, consumers the assurance that the wallet that they're using um, is a wallet that has been provided by a vendor who has gone through that rigorous process of, en of ensuring that the wallet cannot be hacked or complies with regulations. Got it. Got it. Excellent. All right. Well, I mean, it, it, it would appear that digital wallets are here to stay, um, that I as an individual be using one um, in my workplace. I'll be using one uh, as a as a buyer or consumer and uh, probably as in my role as a citizen. Um, would I need different wallets to support these or is, is one wallet going to suffice? Well, it would be wonderful. Uh, it would be a wonderful world if one wallet would suffice. And therefore, we also work with organizations like the Identity Foundation to ensure that all our wallets are interoperable with each other, which gives consumers the choice of using any wallet that they want, as long as the identity document that's stored within that wallet can be shared and verified by entities outside uh, of that particular vendor that they have procured the wallet from. Therefore, ensuring that the wallet that a user uses or a consumer uses is also interoperable with other services out there right. is pretty crucial so that you don't find yourself to be in a situation where you have 10 digital wallets right now, one to use for travel and another one to use to buy alcohol. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I, I realize this is probably a 40,000 foot fly through. Uh, we could probably spend the next hour on this, um, but I very much appreciate you taking a few minutes with us today. Excellent. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you, Rohan.